All right, we're good. I'll just stand here. All right, guys, we are recording, so thank you. All right, so welcome, welcome, welcome. I appreciate you guys being here once again. So, like, the whole purpose of today is to try to get you to contemplate, think about a little bit uh, why we actually have knowledge, right? So, like, what is the value of knowledge? Because it's really easy to go into school and say, like, well, I have all this knowledge, I have all these books, and but what do you really do with it? And so, in order to do that, we have, a, I have this thing called, it's some mine, it's called the Allegory of the Cave. Has anyone ever heard of it? No. The, al the Allegory of the Cave is a very, very old story from the ancient Greeks, actually, uh, by a guy by the name of Plato. Not Plato, that you would build something with, but Plato, uh, like with a T-O, like your big toe. Um, so Plato was a philosopher. In fact, uh, he's one of the uh, wisest of all men. When people talk about philosophy, they really refer to this type of guy. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to look at. But in order to do that, let's first kind of think about where we are today, right? Like kind of what we've, what we've come up through and what we've gone through. So let's just kind of think about like what we really know about knowledge and like what we know about how long these things have been around and what we know about the way we are going to be moving. So take a guess. Anybody want to take a guess like how long the Earth has been around? 85,000 years. 85,000 years? Okay. I was never What do you think? I was going to say something like, you know, like roughly around a million years. A million years? Roughly around. Uh, like two billion years? Two billion years. Billion. So we actually are at four billion five hundred uh, million years, right? Now that's a strong estimate. We get that by, you know, rock studies and so forth. Now think about this, right? Just because the Earth has been around, that does not necessarily mean humans have been around, right? So how long do you think humans have been around? Probably. Two, around... Two, two million years. Two million? Like 65,000. 65,000? I'm just saying million. A billion? <laughs> One billion? We're actually about 200,000 years old. Now that's first... Homo erectus, right? Which means man walking upright, right? That's like us as kind of humans, is kind of how we are. We've been around for about 200,000 years. But once even we became humans, we still had to learn things and we had to progress to a different type of lifestyle, such as a civilization. So, how do you think we've been together as a civilization? How long has that been around? What do you think? Like, it's between, I think, 50,000 to 65,000. 50 to 60,000? So, a civilization, like when. Like the cavemen started, like actually, like trying to like talk. Like, civil. Like, good talk question. Good question. Civilization is the idea of people living together, kind of as a group, right? And each having like different functions within that group. Would you start with like the Romans and the Greeks and the Mesopotamians? That is a civilization. Would you start with the Mesopotamians? That is a civilization as well. These are great civilizations. When do you think we first began as civilizations? Uh, probably um, 60,000, 65,000? Yeah, around there. Yeah. Yeah. So out of the 200,000 years, uh, as civilizations, we've only been around for 10,000 years. What? Only been around 10,000 years, that's it. So, it, I mean, think about this for a bit, right? For 190,000 years, we existed, but we really didn't have that knowledge, or at least know what to do with that knowledge to work together. It took us 190,000 years, and high school's only four years, and you're complaining. <laughs> How about America? How long have we been a country? Since like 17... 300 something years. 300 and something? Since 1776. You're a historian. I love that. So do the math. Oh, so like... Oh, 20, I was going to say like... 240 years. Say like that, like now think about this for a second, right? Because now 10,000 years, we're a, cut, we're a civilization. But look at like the United States. We're like the young bucks on the block. Like we are a young group when it comes to... Like you were talking about Mesopotamia, Romans, Greeks, right? Even Europe as a whole. So we are very young in this idea. And yet look how progressive we are because we decided as a country to use our knowledge a little differently. Everybody has it. We learn something the same way. But what do you do with that knowledge is really what this whole lesson is going to be about. So now what about public schools? Let's talk about education. How long have we been in public schools? Like 1896. 1896. Uh, 100 years. 100 years. We have been a public school system for only 37 years. I'm 45 years old. So technically, technically as a public school. Now when I say public school, I do want you to understand this is when the Department of Education was established. It doesn't mean that there weren't schools prior to this. There were schools prior to this, but schools were very limited. And they were limited to the particular area that you lived in. They were limited to the kind of money that you might have. 
They were limited to if you're a farmer, for example, you probably didn't go to school. You know? This was more of a, an elite concept. The 1979 Department of Education started in, or excuse me, in 1979. That's only 30, uh, 37 years. We began kind of a more public type of setting of schools around the uh, industrial age. And in fact, if you think about it, this is kind of going a little bit, but think about your school system today and in the Industrial Revolution. Anybody know anything about the Industrial Revolution? Or what do you think of when I say Industrial Revolution? Um, the British, um, how they access coal and what happens like this practically coal, take over the world. power systems, well, steamboats. steamboats, machineries, right? Now think about the trains, exactly. What do you think about the idea of teaching kids school during this age? What would you have to be teaching them, do you think? Mechanics. Mechanics of some sort. In fact, just the opposite. You know what you teach them? Mathematics. Something that we still actually do today. Think about our school system today. We teach you how to stay in one place. We teach you how to do basically a mechanic type of job in the sense of not knowing mechanics. Because if I'm working in a factory, do I build that machine? No. No. I do like jink and ksh, jink and ksh. <laughs> right? I'm like this one machine myself. I'm like part of the machine. Or I'm picking something up and putting it over here, right? You know, and so it's a totally different mindset. And if you think about the way public education was originally set up, that idea of teaching you is just like a factory system itself. You yourself, at a certain age, you should be in a certain grade. It's not based on your knowledge. You could be the smartest person in class, and you're sitting right next to one of the dumbest people in classes. That's nothing to do with knowledge. It's based on grades. Just or excuse me, age. Just like a like an expiration date almost on a something in a factory or a built-on date. Yes, ma'am. But is that also like how the school system kind of like evolved throughout because now you have kids like in high school how the classes are more mixed because totally. of based on your knowledge? Absolutely, because what do we start to do? We start to look at the knowledge that we have and we start to question what are we doing with this knowledge, right? Because we come up with this idea of like, we should teach everyone arithmetic. Great! Well, now what? <laughs> everyone knows how to add. Maybe we should do a little more, right? We should teach everyone to read. Now what? Right? And so this is what I'm asking you to think about because you are sponges. You are, we all are. We're constantly learning things, but you're constantly at a, or you are at an age where you're constantly absorbing all this new information and, that, and it's important to think about what you're going to do with it. Now, I'm not asking you to like set your career goals or anything like that, but I'm asking you to think about, it's called metacognition. Good word. You want to say it another one? Metacognition. What do you think that might mean? What, is, what do you think it means to be uh, like cognitive of something? Aware. <laughs> Aware? Is that what you said? Aware is exactly it. But does anyone know what meta means? Maybe you've heard of like metaphysics or it's usually like a kind of science term. <laughs> the idea, so meta is like kind of within, right? So it's like a, something within something. So if we have metacognition, we're actually thinking about thinking. Oh. Thinking Inception? about thinking, Inception. right? Inception. Yeah, it's Inception, exactly. It's the movie Inception, the dream within a dream within a dream. Yeah, that's kind of the idea. Now imagine, going back to that movie Inception, if, the, if when they become more aware of them dreaming within the dream, it changes everything, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. So if you start actually thinking about the way you are thinking, your outcomes will be different. Always. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, last one, by the way, and this is a big one. How about the iPhone? How long is it? Been? Nine years. Ten thirty. I said nine. No. Yep. We are at actually technically nine. But yeah, I think it's coming on as ten years. It's coming on as ten year thing. I bring this one up because I bring this up because I want you to realize that it has not been around that long. But look how we have adapted our entire lives based on things like this. Our whole concept of knowledge is changing because of this. Teachers, one second, teachers cannot teach the same way anymore because of this. Think about it. I can't possibly try to give you knowledge when you can just say like, uh, hold right there, I'll look it up myself. Google. Google. Got it. Teachers' roles have to change. They can't just be regurgitating information. We can't just be, <laughs> it's a nice image, right? We can't just be giving up the information. It's now our jobs really to start to try to make you think a little bit more about knowledge and how you're using it. Metacognition. Yes, ma'am. 
Is that also why um, they teach us more to think without like using technology more? Like we have to use like our knowledge and what we know. Yeah, I would hope so because anybody can tell you what to do, but it really takes a very intelligent person to be able to figure out why they're doing that. But then why? They say that we they don't want us to use like the internet and stuff to find out all the answers. Yet schools are now technological digital. Digital. Yeah. and digital. It makes yeah. no sense. Well, it's a balance for sure, right? Because you can't just be like, all right, guys, here's a laptop, knock yourself out, learn something, right? There still has to be a structure. You still should be able to guide some people in some direction. Um, but as you're moving forward through education, you should be getting to a point where you're like, oh, this is the concept? I get it. I know how to start to learn about this. And then you start to find your own path because you're being able to think about the way you are right. thinking. So, yeah, this is, yeah. So, now years, like, we just saw that before, school was, like, somewhat easy, per se. Because, like, you know, just, there weren't that much distractions. Right. Like, it's just mostly just throwing paper across the classroom. That's all you really get. Oh, that's now, cool. like, every night, like, nine years later, like, so much things that have like been groundbreaking for us. Like now, we just have, it's just not, like you said earlier, it's just pulls out our phones and that's it. We find information really that easily. Yeah, it, it changes everything, right? Mm -hmm. Totally. So this is Plato. All right. This is this is the guy that I'm going to be referring to today. Um, here's a quote of his, and it actually has to do everything about what the story is that I'm going to tell you, and it is a story. Um, it's from his book called The Republic. But it says, "We can easily forgive a child who's afraid of the dark." But the real tragedy is, the tragedy of life is when men are afraid of the light. So what do you think oh, that no, the light. That's, that could be a lot of things. All right, well, let's break it down. We can easily forgive a child who's afraid of the dark. Why would we forgive a kid for being afraid of the dark? Because, because they're kids. Yeah, he's just What's the dark? No. What is the dark? The unknown. The unknown. It's a little bit scary, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's just, you know, it's just children. They have small minds. They don't like, you know, like high school. Exactly. Very, like, open to things. They're just very limited down to, like, one mindset. It's like, I got to eat, I got to poop, I got to sleep. That's all it is. <laughs> but when you see something <laughs> new, they get, like, they should they react in two ways. They get, you know, like, they just take it, like, they just embrace it, or they just get scared. Exactly. And dark is the unknown, so I totally agree with that. So now, then, why then, if we can forgive a child for being afraid of the dark, why then is it a tragedy to see a, a man who's afraid of the light? So a man who's afraid of the unknown. Oh! That's exactly it, right? A man who is afraid of the known. I mean, think about that for a second. Do you know of anyone that might be like this? Yeah. I mean, you don't have to call anyone out. <laughs> but the idea of someone being afraid of what they actually know, that's pretty heavy. You know, because that is you running from your, the truth. That's running from yourself at times, right? And that is what leads us to the allegory of the cave. So, here's the story. First of all, does anyone have to know what allegory means? Have you ever heard of? Oh, uh, uh, it's sort. Of, it's like how you say. Uh, I remember. It's like, it's like it's comparing. It's like it's like uh, I don't know what to say. It's like it's like taking a sad thing for like an event or something, but putting it into different words and different twists. Okay, I can see that. It's like one example of it, I read. Have you ever heard of an analogy? Yeah. What's yeah. an analogy? When you're Right. So an, anal an analogy and an allegory are almost the same thing. An allegory is basically a story about something. So like uh, the three pigs, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not really about three pigs. It's about you know, like three blind mice. Three blind mice, right? The uh, uh, Little Red Riding Hood. You know, it's it's a story about a girl walking through the woods. But it's not really a story about a girl walking through the woods. It's a story about you should walk on the path so you're safe. So if you walk off the path, you're gonna die. Right, I mean that's kind of like the idea, you know. <laughs> Most of Disney stories are, are like uh, analogies; they're uh, allegories in that sense that they they're about these things, but they're really supposed to teach you a lesson of some sort, right? So that's exactly what this is. So here's how it starts off. Now I need you to think for a second, okay? Because I'm going to put you in the mindset of the story. This is literally a story, as I said, and uh, Plato used this to try to get the same point that I'm getting across to you. So let's see if it can happen. So you got imagine a cave, right? Inside this cave, there's no light except for a fire in the background. I'll get to that in a second. And so in this cave, there are slaves. And these slaves have been bound their entire lives. So all these slaves have ever, ever known is just the cave wall. It's all they've ever seen. It's all they've ever seen. Right? 
they have not been able to look around. They have not been able to go outside. This is all they've ever known. You understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. As I said, there's a fire in the background. It's the only light that it comes, but the fire is in the background. So what does it actually do? What does it cause? A shadow. Right. If the fire is in the back, just like this, it's going to put a shadow onto the walls. So the only images that these people have ever seen are shadows. Does that make sense? Think about how the sound, the sounds in the cave would be. What do you think it would sound like? Echoes. Very echoey. Would it sound like normal stuff? No. No. In fact, you might even hear it repeated again over and over. Echo, echo, echo. Right. And so all of these other things that are going on. So imagine now there's also in between the fire and where the slaves are, there's a little walkway, a little bridge where workers come in and out, slave masters and guards and so forth. And as they walk back and forth between this roadway, they carry things. And of course, it creates this kind of amazing imagery of, of shadows over the walls. And so these slaves have basically seen this wall their entire life, and that is all they've ever known. Ever, everyone following me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any questions? Uh, yeah. Actually, I know this. Uh, oh, I don't spoil it. I don't, uh, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. So, one day, um, and this is you know, the shadows that might follow around. All right, so one day, a slave escapes. I wish I could answer that. There's no, there's no explaining on how he escapes. Um, but, the, but Plato tells us that the slave escapes, right? And he makes it out of the cave. What do you think is the first thing that happens to him when he makes it out of the cave? He's scared of the light. He's the scared of the light. He's afraid of the light. In fact, the light is so bright for him. Have you ever woken up or something and you're like, oh, oh what? Yeah. You're blinded. Does it feel good? No. No, oh, it's painful. It's painful. And so this slave is exactly, this is exactly what's happening to him. He's blinded so he's by what's taking place. he's afraid of the light place. because it hurts him. He's afraid of the light because it hurts him. But this is an allegory. Because the light's not actually hurting him. The it's... light's not hurting him. What might be hurting him? His mentality. It's the fact that he's the fact that he's been deprived of it. Yeah. He's been deprived of it for sure. Because now like, think about this. We see light every day and we're not afraid of it. It just hurts sometimes when we exactly. look directly at it. What has a slave known his entire life? The darkness. Shadows. Darkness and shadows, oh, right? But these darkness and shadows have been 100% real to him, haven't they? Yeah. It's all he's ever known. So when he comes out and he sees this light, and now all of a sudden, your eyes eventually get used to it, right? So what starts to take place? Oh, you started to make sense of it. Oh, there's a, there's a, a, a tree okay. of some sort. Uh, there's a birds and flying overhead. What's happening to this man? Realization. A new realization. Because he's already had a realization his entire life. But what's taking place now? A new A new, new and sometimes painful realization. It's not always fun. Oh, oh. oh I get it. Are you starting to click? Yeah. So now... What has happened to this man? This man has learned something new, hasn't he? Yeah. More important, not only has he learned something new, but he's learned something that has changed his entire life. He knows now that the shadows on the walls were just that, the shadows. He knows now that there's actually a real three-dimensional world out there, not that's just on some sort of wall. He's hearing things for the first time in a clearer way than anything. How is life going to change, do you think? Do you think it won't change, first of all? Of, if he escapes fully, then yeah. He should, well, because he's going to have his freedom for sure. But also, again, what is he seeing? Brand new things, hearing brand new things. His whole world has definitely changed. So yes, he will change in some manner or another. So this slave now has a decision, and this really is where it comes back to you. Because the slave now understands a new life. He has been given a new sense of knowledge, right? What do you do with it? Tell everybody. You want to spread the word. Do you think the slave wants to spread the word? Who's he going to tell? What, what if he sees some guy walking outside? Hey, life's not really in a cave. That guy's going to be like, yeah, no crap. You're crazy. He's probably right? going to like try and go back. Into the cave to tell everybody. He does. And then help them get out. But you are exactly right. Wow. Don't spoil things if you know the story. Well, the old fortune yet to come. So he does that. He's like, I have an obligation. I have learned something. I cannot leave my people behind. 
Plato tells us he goes back into the cave, sneaks in, goes to his folks, breaks them out, and says, come with me, guys. We are going to go into a brand new world. It's going to blow you away. All of these things are shadows. They're not real. We're going to see this bright. It's going to be a little bit painful at first and bright at first, but once we get used to it, it's going to be amazing, and your whole life is going to change. And guess what they do? They, they laugh. They kill him. Yeah. Oh, yikes. <laughs> oh, yikes. I'm doing it. <laughs> so why do so, you kill him? But, they're afraid okay, of light. They're afraid of what? Like, the, 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 the lights. Plato the tells the us that the real tragedy is people that are afraid of what? <laughs> the truth. I'm not afraid of That is the difference of knowing something and really doing something with that knowledge, right? I'm sure you have had this in your life before where you've come across some new piece of information and it changes you. Maybe you find out someone's cheating on you. Maybe you find out someone is cheating on your best friend. Maybe you find Ooh. out that uh, you know, there's an ethical dilemma of your life within your family and you find out some more insight to it. Maybe you find out you're adopted. Maybe you find out that your parents just lost their job. Maybe you find out that you're gonna move these are new pieces of information which are extremely painful at it's times, like, but will change your entire existence. And so it's not so much about learning, more so I was what? Uh, oh, uh, I know the word, but I just can't say it. I don't know why. Well, what do you do when you learn something? It's not so much about learning something new. You use it. you got to have to be able to use it. So, is, um, so going back to the story, were they like all in denial? Totally, kind of. in denial. They kill him right then and there, and that's, that's pretty much the end of the story. <laughs> and Because yeah. uh, Plato wants us to think then at that point, like, why would they kill him? And you, you hit it exactly in the head of the nail. They are afraid of the truth, and they're afraid of things. So now here's, as students, where you kind of have to reflect on some. Because sometimes school is not fun. <laughs> and sometimes learning things are not fun or easy. But once you do learn something, you have now an obligation. You either help other people with it, or you keep living in the cave that you've lived in your whole life. So, in the whole idea of the allegory, I kind of asked this idea of like, okay, well, it doesn't, there's a slave in this story, there's a light in this story, there's a cave in this story, and there's a killed slave in this story. But they're not really killed slaves, caves, lights, slaves. They mean something else. So real quick, as we sum this kind of thing up, who do the slaves represent? Society. Society, us. Love it. You guys are so smart. How about the light? The truth. The truth, right? What about oops, touch screen. What about the cave itself? It's like oh. that you're stuck in there. It's like a cage. Your world. Love it. Because guess what ends up happening when you learn something new? Your world changes. Your world changes, but it just becomes the cage breaks. Another okay. cave. Oh, okay. It just becomes another cave, doesn't it? Because you only know the things you know, right? You only know the things you know. And what'd you say? And that's your cave. Yeah. And you can help other people come in, and you can say, come into my cave, I want you to be here. And then they may come and may tell you something else, and then boom, boom, you create a new cave, right? But every single time you're in a cave. And so this is why I preach this to you because I want you to realize that we are in caves, right? And this can't happen. Who's the killed slave? The people that you put down, the people that know things. The, because the even bringers though, like, of knowledge. Like right? even though you may not actually kill them, you still kind of put them down. You're like, no, you're wrong. Exactly. That's not right. And who so but is it right down. for them? No, it might be. It might that. be. To those guys in the cave, that guy that saw the truth, they, he was wrong. And to their knowledge, they were right. Do you see what my point? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so this is the thing that we have to avoid as we get smarter and smarter. We cannot kill that slave. We cannot kill that person that's bringing us new knowledge. You know, and that could be a teacher, that could be your friend, it could be your parents, it could be some music that you hear, it could be a movie that you watched, a book that you read, it could be anything that comes along that's going to change the way you think about something. And we can't deny those things. We may not agree with it, and those slaves could have easily been like, you know what, I don't agree with you, but let's check it out. And then maybe they could have changed their mind, right? But they didn't. 
they completely said, nope, you're wrong, shut it down. And in shutting it down, they now will always be in that cave and they'll never grow out of that cave. As we learn new things, we have to be able to break out of our caves and create new caves and create more caves and more and more and more caves because what we end up doing is seeing the world in a bigger, broader way. And you are at a point in your life where this is mattering the most. Are there any questions with this? You guys have been great. Thank you so much for participating with me. I appreciate it. Can you stop that for me? Um, just press the red button, I guess. Doing everything. That was good acting. Uh, okay, wait. Press the red button. You hit the red button.